Veronica Escavel Winters and Ty Jordan. All season long, we'll be discussing real topics that matter to you from a real and free perspective spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical health and well being. Mondays from 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific Time. Tune in live. 323-693-3043 or by clicking on the link posted on my Shade Champagne social media pages. You can always listen back on demand and download every episode on iTunes. Spirit and Soul. Spirit and Soul. Spirit and Soul with Shade Champagne. You're listening to Grind Hard Radio. Good evening, everyone. That was Elliot Yamin with Free. Welcome to Episode 4 of my brand new show, Spirit and Soul with Sade Champagne on Grind Hard Radio. Thank you to the phenomenal TK for helping me to create and produce our theme song and to Caitlin Kwaki for singing background vocals. You'll be hearing more of my work with them throughout this year and many years to come. Thank you so much to Kato Mafiaso from Grind Hard Radio for helping me to create and produce our radio drop. This 13th episode, 60-minute-ish long show will focus on spiritual, mental, and emotional health and well-being, and this is the most transparent, vulnerable, and empowering project I have ever taken on. I will be sharing testimonies and stories from my life, what I believe and why I believe this way, and sharing my personal journey to divine health and wellness. We'll be discussing topics like food, relationships, fitness, prayer, meditation, self-love, grace, faith, overcoming fear, anxiety, depression, panic, and so much more. We'll be speaking life into you and your dreams, encouraging your heart, and praying for your every need. I'll be featuring my mentors, favorite speakers, and authors throughout the season. Every episode will be available on iTunes search Spirit in Soul with Sade Champagne, and you can download them for free. Also, my Sade Champagne YouTube channel is another place where you can listen to the show afterwards. I am so glad to be here with you this evening, morning, or afternoon, depending on where you are tuning in from around the globe. All the episodes of my show are available at blogtalkradio.com slash grindhard underscore radio. I've also posted the direct link to this episode on my Twitter and Facebook pages, so you can tune in at any time. If this is your first time listening, I am a professional treasure finder. I find the gold and treasure that is already in every person, and I point it out. I do this however I feel led in my heart, through my voice, music, creativity, resources, time, philanthropy, ideas, however I want to and feel led to. I am a receiver and giver of grace. I am very thankful to be living and pursuing my dreams every single day while helping others to live and pursue theirs and being able to reach people all around the world. The title of tonight's episode is The Power of a Dream. The power of a dream. This is another one of my favorite topics and a theme of my life. Because of a dream, actually many dreams, I'm here alive and well, breathing and in good spirits today. Because of a dream, I could carry on in grace and have faith that God had more for me. Dreams saved my life. 
We are alive today because God dreamed us in his heart before time even began. Veronica and I are bringing a new Woman to Woman segment. I'll be sharing more words of life, a story time, answering your questions. We have a new Who Said That segment, and we'll be taking another celebration break. At the end of every episode, I'll be taking your prayer requests and praying for any additional needs I feel on my heart for you. The never-ending story is one of my all-time favorite movies and reminds us of the importance of keeping a soft heart and a childlike imagination, the power of belief. Tonight, I'm giving away two DVD copies of this wonderful movie. Stay tuned in tonight and follow my Facebook and Twitter pages to see when and how you can win. I'll be giving away fun prizes and gifts all season long. My Power of a Dream Tour is always booking new shows and performances. This winter, we will be in San Luis Obispo, Ventura County, Orange County, Kern County, L.A. County, Fresno, and more. I have begun partnering with Friday Night Live's Ventura County chapter, and it has been phenomenal leading workshops to help teens and preteens in my community. I recently led a self-esteem workshop and also an anti-bullying workshop, and we have many more wonderful things that are in store. This upcoming Tuesday, I'm going to be speaking at Cal Lutheran University in Thousand Oaks to the radio communication classes, and so I'm super stoked about that because imagine, I just barely started having my own radio shows a little over a year ago, and I've been dreaming about this for over five years, and to see now that it's a reality and I'm helping other people who have this dream means so much to me. We love traveling, and if you're looking to bring me, my Power of Dream Tour, or any of our award-winning, critically acclaimed artists or speakers to your city or event, please email me at sadechampagnemusic at gmail.com. That's sadechampagnemusic at gmail.com for more details. Check out my Facebook page, Sade Champagne, to see our full schedule and to see my personal schedule. Just look under events. Lastly, thank you to everybody who watches, shares, and subscribes to all my new videos and my radio show every week. I'm constantly writing new pieces. I'm creating new songs and material and content. And I'm going into the recording studio again soon with TK and Caitlin, whom you heard earlier on my theme song. To find out more about my musical journey and how you can be involved, check out GoFundMe.com slash Sade Champagne Music. That's GoFundMe.com slash Sade Champagne Music. I am live tweeting and posting on Facebook all show long, and I want to know your thoughts. Tweet me at Sade Champagne. Facebook me at Sade Champagne. Instagram, I am Sade Champagne. Hashtag Spirit and Soul, or GHR, to join in the conversation. Shout out to everyone who's already been tweeting me, you Facebook me, you Instagram me, you YouTube me, email me, you message me. Your support amazes me, and I am forever grateful. We're going to get right into our first segment of the night, story time. This is where I share stories from my life. People can argue Bible verses, doctrine, and theology with you all day long, but no one can take away what God has done for you. Tonight, I want to talk about how God used dreams to change and save my life. So for those of you who've been listening all season long, I shared on our very first episode that God introduced himself to me as a little girl around age four through dreams and visions. Many of these dreams I'm living today, and many of them I will be living in the future. And so when people ask me, how did you first come to know God? How did you first come to know Jesus? That's how I did. And when I really think about it, I feel like I've always known God. I've always known Jesus. And that's the way he revealed himself to me. And, you know, I feel that God showed me these dreams as a little girl, that he took me through these amazing visions because He wanted to encourage me and empower me just as as around the time that I was about to start going through a lot of things in my childhood or realize that I was going through a lot of things and in my neighborhoods and in my surroundings to encourage me and remind me that he was with me, that he was for me, that my destiny was greater than my circumstances, that there was a greater reality than what I saw around me. And so from a very young age, I have always been a huge advocate of dreams and being a big dreamer. The funny thing, though, is that the God I knew as a little girl was not the same God that I ended up growing up knowing. You know, because oftentimes you hear stories about this all the time, actually, with, you know, children and kids and young people that they're so have wild imaginations. They dream big. They see big. They are idealists. And then as we grew up in the world, as we grow up in religion and institutionalized church and other types of places, 
it begins to just shrink us, you know, and, and we don't see those dreams or God the same way anymore. But I'm thankful because God is always with us and he is constantly persuading us of his love and his goodness and reminding us of what he always shown us and what we always knew from when we were young. And so he used dreams to give me vision, to change my life, to empower me and accelerate me forward. I can remember times, even right now in my life, you know, a lot of people don't realize that I have lived a good portion of my life in the middle. You know what the middle is. The middle is, you know, you're not where you started, but you're not exactly where you're going. You're in the doorway. So I call that the middle. I spent a good portion of my life in the middle in many areas, and many things in my life have taken a very long time. You know, they've been stirring and marinating for a very long time. And even though it can be challenging, because I don't always find myself to be super patient, I'm patient in a lot of ways, but sometimes I'm not very patient. And as you all know, we live in a microwave society where everything is like super fast and you want it now and and everything is instant and you forget that life actually moves more like a crock pot. (laughs) It moves more like an oven. You know, it takes time. I'm actually very thankful because as things have taken time, I can see how God has used everything for my good. He he did not cause me destruction. He did not cause me heartache and pain. However, he used it in such a way that he empowered me and he and he made my life better than what it ever has been. And I still continue to see that every single day. And even better than that, God has made me secure and confident and at peace in a way that I feel that I'm able to receive all the things that are happening in my life and where I'm headed. There was a time for a very, very long time in my life, for many years, that I found my identity in what I did. I found my identity in all the fancy titles because it makes you feel worthy. It makes you feel like people will take you seriously. And it just makes you feel like you're doing something. You know, I would, This is a phrase I would use before more in religion, but it makes you feel like you're doing something in the kingdom of God. <laughs> it makes you feel useful. And I realize now that that was such death and it was a low quality of life because, you know, when things are going well, how do you feel? You feel good. I'm I'm on the right track. I'm doing things great. I'm called by God. You know, and then when things are not going well and when your dreams are stalling, when people are saying things about you, when you feel alone, how do you feel then? You feel lack. You feel discouraged. You feel like you're not good enough. And so now I feel that God's done such a great healing and such a great transformation in my inner being that I'm able to withstand and be myself no matter what is going on. One of my favorite verses, and I think I shared this with you, with you all before, but I'm going to share it again. And you will oftentimes hear me repeat myself when I speak because I believe it's not only important for the hearer, it's important for the speaker as well. It oftentimes takes us many times to hear and to say something before we actually receive it and begin to process the information. One of my favorite verses is Philippians 4:13 where it says, "In every situation, I am strong in the one who empowers me from within to be who I am." In every situation, I am strong in the one who empowers me from within to be who I am. And that's how I feel in my life today. I feel that no matter what, whether things are going great for me and my dreams are coming to pass and everything is moving moving smoothly, I feel great, you know, in my inner being. Obviously, I feel emotions. You get frustrated and you get irritated and annoyed and you're so over it. But I mean in my inner being of who I am, knowing who I am, I feel secure. And then when things are, are not, you know, when things are going well, you know, um, I, I can just enjoy it and I can have a good time with that and I can receive it. But I don't find my identity in the bad. I don't find my identity in the so-so and I don't find my identity in the good. I find my identity in who Jesus says that I am and who he has created me to be. And so the crazy thing is I see now in my life and, I've, and when I think back, I can actually see him doing this over the years. You know, God gives me new dreams and he resurrects old dreams when I'm in heartbreak and when I'm in disappointment. You know, when I can have a circumstance that's pressing in on me and that makes me feel so drained and overwhelmed, and instead of, of me being sucked in by that and just, you know, beginning to just sink in and feel deeply wounded by that, 
God actually reminds me of the dreams that he's placed within my heart, and he actually starts giving me new dreams of the future. And for me, I see that as if God is showing me things of the future, and he's also showing me things of the past, of how far he has brought me and where where he has taken me from, surely he is taking care of this moment. Surely he is taking care of today. There's no way that we can make it to the future if right now is not taken care of. Surely he will make a way for us. And so he reminds me of his faithfulness, of his love, of his mercy, of his memory. God doesn't forget a thing. He doesn't forget what he promises us. He doesn't forget the dreams that he's placed within our heart. I want to encourage you, you know, anyone who's listening, anyone who's going to listen in the days, months, and the years to come, God cares about your dreams. God cares about your dreams. He cares about you. We are God's dream come true. We are here today alive and living and well because he dreamed us in his heart before time began. Everything that we enjoy in this world today, everything that we see with our eyes, everything that we partake in was once a dream in someone's heart. God is the giver of dreams and all good things things. And it doesn't matter what challenge or calamity that you are facing right now. God is with you. God is for you. God is working it out. He is still bringing your dreams to pass. It doesn't matter how long it has taken. If we really think about it and look at all the people whom we are inspired by, with for me, Jesus Christ being my number one inspiration, and then I have many other inspirations after that, things took time. And and people went through a lot of challenges and heartache. I don't always, I don't know the answer why. I know we have a lot of pain and a lot of evil evil in this world, but that does not stop the love. That does not stop God's goodness. That does not stop our dreams from coming to pass. Yes, we can be delayed. Yes, we can be hindered. But we shall prevail. We shall be standing tall when it's all said and done. And so I want to encourage you tonight to keep moving forward in your dreams. Never underestimate the power of a little at a time. Never underestimate the power of baby steps and consistency and persistence. Continue to just move forward in what he's placed in your life. Even when you feel like you don't have enough in your hands, what you have in your hands right now, what you have in your mind, what you have in your heart, with God is with you, that is more than enough. He will supply for you. God will supply for you. Your dreams matter to him. Don't allow anyone and anything to discourage you and make you feel like God doesn't care about your dreams or it doesn't your dreams are different than God's dreams. No. When we begin to understand and realize that God is with us, God is for us, He is in us. We are one with God. We are one with Jesus. We are one with His Spirit that resides within us as we give Him permission. Then your dreams are God's dreams. God's dreams are are your dreams. They are one and the same. And he cares about it just as much, if not more. I would actually be as bold to say more than we care about it because he's the one who placed it to us. And he will do everything to be able to bring it to pass. And I want to encourage you that in the meantime, he will sustain us. While we're in the middle, he will sustain us. While we're in the doorway, he will sustain us. When you're at the beginning, he will sustain you. When you're at the end, he will sustain you. No matter what chapter you're on in your life, no matter what season, God will sustain you. And so my hope and my prayer for you all tonight and for myself as well is that we will remember where God has brought us from, that we will remember how much he loves us and how valuable he is to us, that we will remember our ancestors and people throughout history and even people who are living today who God has empowered them to overcome great odds and to see so much change and victory and hope brought in this world. The best is here and yet to come. Don't You don't have to feel like your best days are behind you or like everything is always going to be the same. Yes, yeah, some things are going to be the same. God will love you the same. God will encourage you the same. God will be here for you the same. God will resurrect you the same. Those things are the same. But the other things that are trying to drain you and that are trying to hinder you and that are trying to suck life from you, those things will not last forever. And so I love you. I'm here with you all. And I want to encourage you to know that your dreams are amazing. Those dreams in your heart are phenomenal. If you feel today that you don't have a dream right now or you don't know what your dream is, that's okay too. Wherever you are is okay. Who you are is okay. 
You're listening to Spirit and Soul with Sade Champagne on Grind Hard Radio. If you've been following my social media at all, then you're already familiar with this segment. It started as a video series, and now I'm incorporating it into this radio show. Woman to Woman. This was created to help encourage, empower, and inspire me and other women and young girls. I wanted my best friend, Veronica Esquivel Winters, who is a certified holistic life coach, clinical aromatherapist, entrepreneur, and inspirational speaker, to lead this segment with me. Tonight on Woman to Woman, we're sharing about how your dreams are valid. You are worth loving. You are worth fighting for. You are valuable to God. To watch this video series, go to my official YouTube channel, Sade Champagne, and search Woman to Woman Diaries. Today, we want to talk about the truth that your dreams are valid. Your dreams are valid. Say hi, Veronica. Hi, guys. You don't need anyone's permission to live your dreams and to step into your destiny. One of my dear friends, Dr. Jayal the Great, says, Validation is for parking. God already did that when he created you. You are already validated. You don't need anyone's permission to live your dreams and to step into your destiny. Many times we live our life as if we're waiting for someone to say, go, now is the time. You can do it. You already have that within you. Through your original design being born of God, he created you out of the overflow of love in his heart and also through what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross. Your dreams are valid. You don't need anyone's permission. You already got all the permission that you need in order to move forward. I used to live a lot of my life in that way. You know, when I was in religion and in traditional church and a lot of different types of organizations, even being in the entertainment industry, people make you feel as if you need their permission to walk in your greatness. And no. I already got permission, and I'm able to live from that place of wealth and that place of wholeness. We already have God's approval and his acceptance, so you don't have to live your life running around trying to beg for people to like you, trying to beg for them to receive you, trying to hope that they won't reject you. My dear friend Greg Henry talks about this in his message, The Lie of Rejection. It is impossible for anyone to reject you. The only being in this entire world who ever has the authority to reject anyone is God. And God will never reject you because he has already accepted you. He has already approved you. And so because of that, when it comes to your dreams, when it comes to your passions, you can move forward in confidence knowing that you've been approved, knowing that you've been accepted. If he's placed that within your heart, which he has, then he's going to make a way. He's going to open the doors for you to bring it to pass. And I know you may be thinking, well, Shadi, I'm going to have disappointments. Well, um, this is going to be, you know, this is going to happen. Oh, well, it happens to all of us. Being a dreamer is risky. Living life is risky. But you know what? It's the best way to live. There's nothing riskier than living your life paralyzed in fear in neutral. I've never heard of someone saying in my entire life, but I've never read a story of someone saying, oh, I wish I didn't dream so much. Oh, I wish I didn't go after my passions. Oh, I wish I didn't do what I love. Oh, I wish I would have just let fear hold me back. (laughs) It sounds crazy even hearing that because it's usually the exact opposite. And so even if you come to the end, when you come to the end of your life, you come to the end of that dream, you come, you don't get the exact desired result that you wanted. You would still have been a much more empowered, enthusiastic, and encouraged person making that decision to move forward, allowing the grace of God to empower you than you would have if you didn't. And we don't have to live in that regret. We don't have to live in that fear. Also, You are worthy and deserving of everything your precious heart desires. I'm going to say that again. You are worthy and deserving of everything your precious heart desires. There is this mental thought or lie that replays in majority of people's minds that tells us that we are unworthy, we are undeserving, that we are scum. Where does that come from? It doesn't come from God. God doesn't feel that way about us. Jesus doesn't feel that way about us. He's a proof of what God thinks about us. Being made in God's image is the proof of who we are. You are worthy. You are deserving. Regardless of what you've been through, regardless of where you are today, regardless of what anyone has said, regardless of your challenges, regardless of what you do or don't have, you are worthy and deserving. 
Many times in life, we will self-sabotage because of the fact that we don't feel worthy, because we don't feel deserving. So before we even step out there, when we do step out there, we don't give our all. We want to destroy it and become self-destructive because of the fact that we don't feel worthy and we don't feel valuable. Who told you that? It didn't come from God. You are deserving of every single thing that your precious heart desires. And so even as you're listening to this message, as you've been listening throughout this season, we're praying with you, we're praying for you, and we believe in the goodness and the love of God to bring healing to your mind, to your heart, to your being, to be able to see yourself the way that Jesus sees you, to know that you're not separated, to know that you have the same quality of life. You have the same value to God as Jesus does. And you are worthy and deserving. Another thing we wanted to uh, talk to you guys about is that your dreams are there for a reason. Your dreams are there for a reason. They were implanted within you. They were birthed within you for a reason. Um, Just like other people who have these dreams and these inventions and these very successful businesses, those dreams were also implanted in them, and they went for it. And they didn't, didn't, you know, uh, let any of their doubts hold them back. I'm not saying that they probably didn't have any. They probably had a little bit of doubts. They probably had people telling them it wasn't going to work out for them. But they didn't allow that to stop them from dreaming and and pursuing their dreams. So those dreams that you have are there for a reason. You can have the next big invention. You can have the next big business. You can even have a cure for diseases. Lots of amazing things can come out of your dreams, so your dreams are there for a reason. Also, there's no such thing as a dream that is too big or too small. There's no such thing as a dumb dream. Mm -hmm. All dreams that you have are valid, and they're all possible, and they are there for a reason. So we just wanted to encourage you guys to listen to those, those, you know, um, even the smallest thoughts in your head that just pop up and say, oh, maybe you know, this is a good idea or this is a good invention, you know, write it down. Or even if you, you know, some people actually dream about dreams. They they get a dream at night and then the next morning they'll like jot it down and it becomes a reality. So just pay attention to those things um, in your life that pop up, those ideas that pop up um, and write them down and, 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 you know, watch them come to pass. Another thing we wanted is... Um, share with you guys too is to choose to still dream even when a dream gets put on hold or even if a dream doesn't turn out the way you thought it should or goes where you think it should have went you know there's no such thing as a failed dream you know we learn from from what you know the, we learn from situations we learn from what happens, and we keep moving forward, we keep dreaming, and even if a dream is put on hold, it doesn't mean that it's dead, it doesn't mean that it wasn't supposed to be, it just means that it's, it's you know, put on hold, it doesn't mean that you're dreaming wrong, um, just stay encouraged and know that, you know, that dream can come, can come to pass again, it could get rebirthed or uh, revived, so just continue to dream and believe in your dreams and believe in yourself and it's never too late to start dreaming. Um, it's never too late to start a dream, even if it's a dream since you were little and you're, you know, older now. It's never too late to start, you know, pursuing that dream and 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 watching that dream come to a reality for you. That's right. And God is the God of resurrection. He's able to resurrect any area of your life that feels dead. Any area of your life, he's able to resurrect it. He's able to sustain you and encourage you and empower you to know that you are loved, that no matter what is going down around you, no matter what is anyone's trying to say about you, no matter what you feel, you know, as far as this is so challenging, this is hard, that he's able to sustain you and love and empower you so that you can be as Paul was, where it talks about in Philippians 4.13 and the mirror translation, which is my favorite, where it says, In every situation, I am strong in the one who empowers me from within to be who I am. In every situation, I am strong in the one who empowers me from within to be who I am. And I believe, we believe that God can encourage and empower you in such a way that no matter what's going down or around you, that you can always be yourself and that you can always move forward in your passions and your dreams, regardless of what things may look like. We love you. Thank you so much for joining us.
Our next segment of the night is Words of Life. This is where I speak words of affirmation over you, your dreams, your loved ones, and your life. We will be featuring this segment with new words of affirmation every single episode because with all the cynicism and pessimism that tries to drown us, we can afford to hear the truth as often as possible. I believe in the power of words because I have seen negativity, criticism, and discouragement tear people down. I have seen encouragement lift people's spirits and alter the very course of their destinies. What we hear and listen to are what will be birthed in our hearts, and it will definitely affect what we believe, think, and feel. Play this as many times as you need to and allow yourself to just soak in not only this segment, but the entire episode. You are the best investment you will ever make. My dreams are valid. I don't need other people's validation because God already validated me when he created me and through Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter how many people tell me no on the journey to my dream. God has already said yes, so yes it is. He will bring all the right people, resources, and open all the right doors in order to bring this dream to pass in my life. God is the giver of dreams and all good things. I am God's dream come true. He will always make a way for me and provide for me. I don't have to worry about today, tomorrow, or the past because God is working out all things in my favor. He is restoring my life and all that I lost. He is healing my heart and awakening my being to his love for me. God is helping me to dream and trust again. God is helping me to heal, love, and believe again. I am a visionary. I am a leader. I lead by example and by the way that I love. The only time I follow the crowd is if they're going in the right direction. Otherwise, I am perfectly content with starting a new lane. Every day I wake up in expectation and anticipation that I'm headed in the right direction. I am exactly where and who I need to be. I have all I need within me and around me to move forward each day. God is with me, in me, for me, and has already gone before me taking care of every day of my life. I can relax, rest, and breathe easy. Anxiety is leaving my mind, body, and soul and is being replaced by peace, love, and grace. My systems are functioning healthily as they should and my body is awakening to the goodness of God. Insomnia is leaving me and my mind and body are getting healthy, adequate rest every night. I sleep in peace and feel God's comfort in my rest and dreams. Fear is dissolving from my being and I am being fused with courage, confidence, and boldness. It is impossible for me to be rejected because God has always accepted me. When people tell me no or dismiss me, I don't take it personally because my trust and hope are in God. I am secure and confident in my heaven-made identity. I walk in peace. I walk in my truth. I don't wait for people to jump on board and support me. I start now and learn as I go. God and I will figure it out together as we go along. I don't wait for people to give me opportunities. Instead, I create opportunities and help others to do the same. I am innovative and creative. I am a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I am an overcomer. I am a thriver. Every day is my day. My life is significant. I matter to God. I don't allow the world to define my success. I allow God to define my success. And he says that I am a champion. He fights all of my battles for me and I rest in this eternal victory. I am seated in heavenly places and I carry the presence of God with me every moment of every day. Our final segment of the night is Who Said That? 
This is where I feature message clips from my mentors, favorite speakers, and authors. These clips are also another reflection of what I believe. Tonight's clip comes from my dear friends, inspirations, and mentors, and Sade Champagne Show castmates, Rick and Melissa Wood. I titled this clip, Joy in Transition. It's okay. Change and transition is part of our life, or are part of our life, those two things. They're just, it's just life. It's just what happens. And, um, you know, no matter what you go, what you do, where you go, who you are, um, you're going to have that. So our attitude and our heart's um, uh, posture during that transition a lot of times determines how successful uh, it will it will be. Um, joy, you know, what is joy? Joy is not just simple happiness. Joy is this confident awareness that God is going to come through. I mean, that's like it's like this hope. It comes from hope. Joy and hope are like tied together. So when you have hope that God's going to come through, there produces some joy in you. Uh, even before you see the desired result um, or the outcome that you think you need or when that season is over, you can have joy knowing that the process is okay. Um, I'm real big about it's all finished. You know what Jesus done to fully accomplished everything. But maturity and growth is part of, un, of what it means to be human and unpacking all that Jesus did. So I want to talk to you quickly, and this is I'm going to try to just give you a, a, just a quick breakdown of this. Um, but there is a thing called Hudson's Cycle of Life. And so in Hudson's Cycle of Life, it, ta- it breaks our life down into um, like four parts. Or, and so there's the go for it part, which is part one. That's when you're going for the goal. That's where you're living out your dream. That's when you're, you know, uh, you're doing everything that you've uh, thought of, or that's when you're having fun in that season. You're going for it. And the second season is when that season starts to die down, sometimes you go through the doldrums. Now, doldrums you know, in sailing terms is when there's no wind. And so the doldrums, you hit this time in the doldrums where you just begin to feel like life is not as exciting as it once was. And so that should lead you into the next phase, which is called the cocoon or cocooning. And, you know, like uh, the butterfly does not become a butterfly overnight. It has to enter to the cocoon and it goes through the process and then it, it comes out and it's the beautiful butterfly. And that leads to the fourth phase, which is the getting ready to do what? To then go for it all over again. So if you can see in your mind's eye just a big circle, one, two, three, four in these quadrants. And, and we go through life transitioning from each of these segments and it's natural and normal. Now, let me pause here and say that should give us joy. To know that life has a cycle, life has purpose, life has meaning, and it's okay to be in any of these categories. So what happens in America, what happens today in our society is we hit the doldrums in our marriage. We hit the doldrums in our job, and instead of digging deep and going into the cocoon phase where we uh, revision and we just – and we let – you know, we bundle ourselves up, if you will, in – in our chrysalis, and we let God do the work, and, and, and we just rest, and we, and we don't try to figure it all out right away. When we enter into that cocoon, then we can begin to grow. But most of the time, we skip that. How do we have joy in this? We have joy in knowing that change and transition is a part of life, and each phase of life needs to be celebrated, and we can be aware, and we can be present. That's one thing that I've been really working on is being present, so uh, being in the moment and enjoying each stage and phase. I have to say that the life cycle tip is one of my favorites because it allows you to just rest rest in the idea that it's okay. Whatever phase you're in, it's okay. If you're in a phase of being in the cocoon or the doldrums, it's okay. It's part of the process. But another thing that really helps me to be able to have joy in the midst of transition and change is just knowing that I don't have to have all the answers. Sometimes you just have that gut feeling, or I'd you know, really rather say God telling you, because many times he's speaking to us and we don't even realize it, but that gut feeling that it's time to make a change, that God's doing something different in your life, that it's time to move, it's time to get a new job, it's, it's time for transition. And you don't have to have all the answers or everything figured out to make that transition. We've watched this in our own lives over and over again. About 12 years ago, we moved out to California basically because some friends said, hey, we have a church here, we'd like you to come be with us. They didn't even have a job for us. 
And so we left Texas with our two kids, packed ourselves up, moved to California, had no idea what was ahead. Both of us just felt this is what's next. And little did we know a couple years after being there, Rick was going to become the senior pastor of a church. And we stayed there for 12 years, leading and pastoring an amazing church. And so now we've made a transition again. We're in Portland. We're not really sure why we're in Portland, but we're here because we just knew this is this is a season of transition and change for us. And it's okay that we don't have it all figured out. And so I can have joy and be happy about this change, knowing that the answers will come in due time. I just got to keep putting one foot in front of the other and have a good time while doing it. Now I want to take some time to pray for you and your family. I'll be doing this every week. It's one of my favorite things in the world to do, and not just on the radio show, but I do it all day long and throughout the night too. I believe in the power of prayer. God hears even the prayers and things we don't say. I want to stand with you and your loved ones for every need and care in your heart. If it matters to you, and it matters to me, and it matters to God. He is constantly at work bringing everything together, healing you and restoring your life so that you will transcend every and any kind of struggle you could face in this world. First, I want to pray for my friend, Insulin. And so I'm reading these prayer requests um, as I am praying for you live on the show. This is from Insulin, Karen Tall in Africa, and I believe they are in South Africa. I'm not sure what part because I'm just looking at the request right now. He says, for me to awaken more and more to the love of Christ for humanity. I think that's such an amazing prayer, insulin, because, you know, in our society, people are very <laughs> lack, are lacking a lot of love nowadays. We are lacking a lot of love. And so I'm praying that not only for you, but for our entire, for me and our entire society. Father God, I thank you so much that you are the God of love, that you love defines who you are. I thank you that we are awakening and insulin is awakening to your love for humanity, that Jesus, that you love us so much that you gave everything for us and you you gave everything and you will never withhold any good thing from us. I thank you that you're opening our hearts to see people the way that you see them, that you see everyone through your eyes. You see them full of hope. You see them full of courage. You see them as your children. And thank you that we're able to see people the way that you see them. This one is anonymous, says, hello, beautiful woman. I trust you are well and doing good. My prayer request is in every second of my life to be awakened to Christ in me and my I amness. So like how I am. Got it. Because you know, if you all know within um I want to say it's in the Old Testament, but it, it this definitely applies to today where it talks about that God is I am and Jesus talks about how as he is, so are we in this world. So we are in Christ. We are one. And so um my I amness, the love that resonates within me and keeps being focused, to close my ears to the negativity and to open to the positive of life, to just use my mouth and tongue to speak truth and to speak life. Also praying for my family as well so they can just awaken to the love inside them and awaken to their truthness and walk truthfulness and walk away from false identity, living in their truthfulness, embracing what has been done for us. And so I think this is another one of my African supporters. And so, Father God, I thank you so much for um, this precious woman, and I thank you that you are continuing to awaken her to her identity and her value and her destiny in you. Thank you that you're continuing to strengthen her and give her courage. Thank you that you're bringing her new confidence every single day in her dreams and in her and her destiny and her purpose in you and her life. Thank you that she will only hear your voice, that she will only hear what you have to say about her. She will only hear encouragement, uplifting, positivity. Anything that comes to her that's negative, I thank you that you are stopping it in its tracks and it will not go to her heart. Thank you that she will only receive what you say about her life. I also pray for her family to be awakened to your love for them, that her, your, her family is being set free from any chains and any um, mental, emotional, spiritual bondages that they're living in. And I thank you that they're going to be able to walk in freedom. I also thank you that you are just protecting her every single day. You protect her mind. You protect her spirit. You protect her soul. You protect her body. You protect her relationships. Thank you so much that you just continue to fuse her with your life and with your encouragement. In Jesus' name. This one is also anonymous. Pray for wisdom. Pray for our wisdom in making wise choices with our finances that will boost us into a new income bracket that will enable us to give to the charities of our choices in bigger ways than we have been able to thus yet. Thank you, Sade. 
Father God, I thank you that you are the God of abundance, that just because we may see economic tragedy happening around us, you are not broke and heaven is not broke. So I thank you that you are the God who provides for us every single day. Thank you that you are opening the doors for um, for my friend's prayer request, and, and you have answered that prayer. Thank you that you are provi- providing for them in such a phenomenal, outstanding way that they will be able to live that dream of writing checks to other charities and supporting others. She desires to be a benefactor, and I thank you that that is what she is. Thank you that you are bringing all the resources for her business, that you are multiplying their finances. Thank you that you sustain them every single day of their lives and continue to encourage them and empower them in their dreams and in their value in you, in Jesus' name. Also praying for my dear friend Kaylee's stomach and back. She actually just she's on the way to the ER right now I think because the pain has been very unbearable and they're trying to figure out what's going on with her. And I just thank you, Father God, right now that you are bringing life to her womb. I thank you that you're bringing life to her entire being, to her entire reproductive system. I thank you you're bringing life to her back. Thank you that you're bringing life to her abdomen. Thank you that if all of her systems will function the way that they're meant to, healthily and normally. I thank you so much that whatever is happening within her body, that you are, you've given the doctors wisdom and that they're going to be able to move as they need to. And thank you that even in the meantime in that, you're bringing healing to her. And thank you that you're providing for her and you're, you are um, freeing Kaylee from any fear from any fear, and also um, and knowing that you are with her and that you are subsiding the pain and instead you are just fusing her with your love, with your hope, in Jesus' name. Also for Corinne, she says, praise with me that our needs are small. It is a wonderful blessing. Pray for me for mental, emotional rest and wisdom and relationships. So lately in my tiredness, I feel like I'm forgetting to love first. You are a treasure. Thank you for sharing your heart and time. Father God, I thank you so much for Corinne. Thank you that you are bringing rest to her mind and to her emotions. Thank you that you are continuing to just give her peace. I'm praying peace for her for every single day that she's living. That Corinne is walking in your peace. She's walking in your rest, your joy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that her mind is able to relax that um, her emotions are able to relax and come to agreement with what you say about her life and with your promises. Thank you that you've given her wisdom in her relationships and that um, you're, and she, you know, has a lot of kids that, and they're amazing, wonderful children that you have blessed her and her family with. Thank you that you're fusing her with supernatural energy and strength. Thank you that you're fusing her and her husband with supernatural energy and strength every single day, that you are just continuing to bring this family together. You're continuing to provide for them and take care of them. And thank you so much that love continues to overflow from their heart and your grace continues to follow them wherever they go. And um, our final one for the night is for one of my best friends, or actually my very best friend in the world besides Veronica, Christina Renee, she says, hey, sis, I know you're about to do a radio show very soon, and I just would like you to pray for my business, my goals for this year, and that everything will piece together that I've been working on and trying to manifest the past six years in my life. I also pray for you that this year you will take off in a direction that you've never been before. Amen. That will take you even higher and higher into your dreams and aspirations and goals, and you will earn so much money and friendships and connections as well. I love you and hope to talk to you soon. Amen, sis. Amen. (laughs) Amen. So, Father God, I thank you so much for Christina Renee. I thank you that you are, I thank you that you are empowering her and her dreams and her aspirations. Thank you so much that you are opening the right doors for her business, that you are providing all the resources that are needed. Thank you that you are encouraging her and her goals, that you're bringing Christina Renee confidence and courage to be able to move forward in what you called her to and what you've laid upon her heart and what she desires. Thank you that you are giving her supernatural strength and energy and you're restoring her health so that she will feel excited and empowered to move forward in these dreams every single day. Thank you so much that you're bringing all things together in her life, all things. And I just want to pray for anyone who's been feeling overwhelmed and you've been feeling overcome by your circumstances and you've been feeling bullied by the challenges in your life. I'm praying for all of us for us to know that God is still God for us to know that we are valuable to God. We are not forgotten. And for us to continue to remember how far, as I mentioned in the earlier part of tonight's show, how far God has brought us, that he will never forget us, that he is for us, that he's always for us and has always been. 
from before the beginning of time. And so I want to encourage you all tonight that when the dust settles, when it's all said and done, we are going to be standing tall. And so I pray for all of us tonight that we will love anyway, that we will dream anyway, we will believe anyway, that we will continue to be who God has called us to be, who he has placed upon our hearts anyway, and that we will not let anything or anyone um, remove us from this peace, from this love, from this grace that we have in our hearts, no matter what challenges we may be facing. God is still good to us, and he will always be here with us, in us, and make a way for us. We are valuable. We are conquerors. We are overcomers, and we are going to continue to rise tall. Also, for anyone who's listening, if you have a specific prayer request, because I see some callers on the line, and you want me to pray that for you, or you need some encouragement tonight, just press 1 so I can see you in the studio, and I will pray for you. I will encourage you and lift you up. Um, And so, okay, I do have someone on the line who wants to come into the show. 757, I'm bringing you in. Hello? Hi. Hi. How are are you? (laughs) My name is Shantel. I'm doing well. How are you? Your name is what? Chantal. Oh, Chantal. Awesome. How are you tonight? I'm good. How can I pray for you or encourage you tonight, Chantal? I'm just asking for a prayer for healing for my mother's body. My mother is in the hospital with pneumonia. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm okay. just praying for healing for her and strength for my family because she's going through a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how long has she been in the hospital for? She's been in the hospital um, almost a week. She's, wow. Uh, she's had, she has pneumonia. She's uh-huh. in kidney failure. And she also has some type of blood cancer. So I'm just praying for mm-hmm. her healing. Okay. All right, and does she get like? Does she have like a lot of numbness that she feels like in her limbs sometimes, like in her arms and her legs or her feet? She might. I, I don't. I think it's yes, in her arms. Okay. <clears throat> I, I hear was, her talking about that. I was feeling that. that. Yes, yeah, wow. I was feeling that as you were talking about. I was feeling that mm. she has um, numbness in her arms. So, and what's your mom's name, Chantel? Her name is Carrie. Okay, Carrie. All right, I'm going to pray right now. Father God, I thank you so much for Chantel. Thank you for bringing her into the show tonight. Thank you that we have this opportunity to be able to come into agreement for her and her family. And I just lift up Carrie right now to you. I thank you, Father God, that you are bringing life to Carrie's body and to her entire being. Thank you that you're drying up all pneumonia in her body and that you are renewing her kidneys. I even pray right now for... um, For the cancer that's in her blood, I thank you that you are giving her brand new blood, that you are giving her brand new systems in her body. I thank you that you are just bringing hope to Carrie, bringing hope to her and and courage and comfort to her to know that, that it's not over and that she still has more life that's in her. Thank you that you are renewing and restoring her joy, even right now in the hospital bed. I thank you that you have already met her and that you are coming even to her in her dreams and you're reminding her of how valuable and how loved she is by you. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the God of miracles and the God of healing, that you never forget anyone. And also I speak to her in rooms, and I thank you that you are are bringing back full movement to all of her body that she's not going to have to feel like she has trouble trouble with walking or trouble with feeling, you know, um, with her body going numb or any of those things. Just thank you that you're renewing and restoring her health every single day. Thank you, Jesus, even right now that she's still infused and encouraged with your love. And I thank you so much for Chantel and for their family. I thank you that you are strengthening them even right now, that you're restoring and renewing their joy that you are for them and you are with them, that you will never forget them. Thank you that you are providing for their every single need. Thank you that they're going to be, that Chantel is going to be able to rest at night and her family is going to be able to rest at night. Yeah. And they're not going to be worried and scared and afraid, but they're going to be able to go to bed knowing that you are for them, that you have never forgotten yeah. them, and that you are working out all things in their favor, regardless of how it looks. You are the God of resurrection. You're the God of bringing things together. And thank you that you are just making a way for this precious, beautiful family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. My God. Amen. Thank you so much for calling in, Chantel. Do you have anything else that you'd like for me to pray for you about or encourage you about? I'm just myself. Um, 
I'm having, it's, it's like I, I'm placed in a situation now, and I got my mother. I live in Virginia. My mother's in New Jersey. Um, mm-hmm. I just got a promotion on my job, and I have to go away. Thank you. I have to go away for training for three mm-hmm. weeks for my job. I work mm-hmm. for the airlines, and okay. I'm happy. I lost my place today, so mm-hmm. I'm just believing God for a new door to open, and that I'll mm-hmm. be able to go through my, you know, training for my new position. Without the mm-hmm. stress that I'll be able to pass the tests and, you know, grasp what mm-hmm. it is that I need to grasp with all the stress mm-hmm. that I have going on. I just, I'm just mm-hmm. asking God for a new door to open and that I mm-hmm. make it through, you know, this training that I have to go through. Because I was going to not go and just mm-hmm. try to go later, but I just need to make it through this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I want to encourage you, Chantel. Yeah, I want to encourage you, Chantel, that you are such an amazing woman that you've got a lot more in you than you think. Mm. You've got a lot more Mm. in you than you think. Mm. You know, even if at this present moment it may feel as if you're at the end of your rope, I want to encourage you that you are not at the end of your rope, that God is lifting you up. He is lifting you up and he is with you. He's working out all things in your favor. He is strategically setting things in place for you. He knows the desires of your heart. He knows what you care about. He knows what's bothering you. And he is working it out for you. You are so valuable to him. And also I believe that God wants to encourage you, Chantel, that you are such more gifted and you're more more gifted and more brilliant than you know, that you Mm. are a fully capable and phenomenal woman. You don't have to ever doubt yourself, ever have to doubt Mm. your brilliance or your gifts or your talents, that you are a phenomenal woman and you can walk boldly in who God has created you to be. Regardless of any challenges or setbacks you feel that you've had, God is still setting things up in favor for you. You are still yes, moving Lord, forward. You're you. not moving backwards. You're moving forward, thank Chantel. You, and so you can walk in confidence in that and being, I, I really see God is going to be, he's restoring your joy and he's restoring your hope and he's restoring your um your confidence and who he's created you to be and what you're moving forward in. And um, and even though, yeah. like you said, you may have these stress that's happening around you, God is working it out. He is going to be, he's going to be settling these storms and, and the stress and all these things yes, for you. Lord, and, he, and he's going to, and he's sustaining you and empowering you to move forward thank in you, your Lord, destiny. Because you. You, you've been ready to move forward for a while. You've been ready to move forward yes. for a while. You know what I mean? It's yes. like, you, this ain't something new. This thank is something you, you've been wanting to walk in for a long time. And God yes. wants you to know that you can walk in it. Today is your day and now's your time. And every day that you wake up is your day because God is with you and he's for you. And he loves yes, you and values Lord. who you are. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, wow. You are right about uh, that because I took a position. I moved to Virginia from California. And I, mm-hmm. my um, career is the airlines. So I just took a position mm-hmm. just to get in the door when I came here. Mm-hmm. And it's been, mm-hmm. you know, over almost two years before I could actually mm-hmm. get into the position that I wanted to get in. And that's the door that has opened. So I'm mm-hmm. just thankful, you know, mm-hmm. I'm just thankful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and he's going to work God it out for, for you. That. Those doors are opening. Those doors are going to continue to open. Even if it feels like something is closing at this moment or you miss an opportunity, you can't miss with God because he will always somehow mm. bring it back into fruition and bring it together. So there is no, I yes. personally don't believe there's any such thing as missing with God. I believe that he will bring it back around for us. He will work it out. He will give us infinite chances because he knows that things don't always go according to plan. It would be great if it did, right. <laughs> but that's not the way that it works in this world. And so God sets things that's up right. strategically for us. So no matter how many times we fall, no matter how many opportunities we miss, no matter how much stress, mm, mm, mm. no matter what, Thank we you, can Lord continue Jesus. to walk in our destiny. And so I'm yes. really thankful Thank that you. you called tonight. And I'm not. how did you find out about the show? I was just on blog talk, just looking around, and I seen it and just called in. Mm. Wow. That's amazing. Well, I'm really glad yeah. that you called in tonight. This um, airs every Monday the same time, and if you want to okay. stay in touch with me on um, my Facebook, just type in, like you saw the name on the show, S-A-D-E, like the singer Sade, and then champagne like the drink, and then we can continue uh-huh. to message me from there, and I will pray for you anytime. I will encourage you anytime, and I always post encouraging Thank you, Lord Jesus. on my Facebook. Thank you. And so look at how God set this up for you tonight. You just happen to be yes, looking around on the lot of talks. 
and called into the show, and it was exactly what you needed for some prayer to speak into your life because God wants you to yes. know that he is for you, and he has not forgotten mm. about mm. you mm. or your family. You, he Lord. set this up for you because he loves you so much. Look at God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you. I thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I want to thank, thank you. you so much for calling in. I'm hugging you in spirit right now, and, and please continue to stay in touch and update me on this testimony and know that I'm praying for you and we're standing in agreement with these desires upon your heart and know that it's that it's being taken care of. Yes, I will stay in touch with you. Thank you so much, Chantal. You're welcome. Wow, everyone, that was absolutely amazing. You know, my next segment that I typically go in tonight is celebration break, and that's where I share testimonies from my life and ones that you share with me. I think it's important to celebrate every victory along the way, even the little ones, and that was a huge celebration break we had right there because as you all were listening and heard tonight, Chantel just happened to be looking on Blog Talk Radio and happened to see that my show, or Spirit and Soul, was on tonight, and she happened to call in, and I was able to speak directly to her situation, you know, um, with God's with the spirit of God that lives within me and it lives within all of us and speak directly to her situation and what she was going through. And I'm so thankful. That means a lot to me, and I know that it's an, it's an encouragement to you all and it's a reminder to everyone that God has not forgotten about us, that he is always here and he's always for us. I have time to take one more call if we have another caller on the line and you have a prayer request or you need some words of encouragement, I can pray for you right now. I'm going to give it a few more seconds as we're waiting on before we wrap up for tonight. I'm thankful for every single person's support, and I'm just, this is a phenomenal night. I feel excited. I'm encouraged by listening to Chantel and being able to pray with her and encourage her, and that is definitely a celebration break. Thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight to Episode 4 of my brand new show, Spirit and Soul with Sade Champagne right here on Grindheart Radio. Thank you to TK for helping me to create and produce our theme song and to Caitlin Kwaki for singing background vocals. Thank you, Kata Mafiaso from Grindheart Radio for helping me to create and produce our radio drop. Thank you to my castmate, Veronica Escavel Winters, and also to Rick and Melissa Wood for your message clip, Joy in Transition. It's okay. Thanks to Grindheart Radio for the opportunity to create my own radio shows. Our final song of the night is Jordan Smith's Climb Every Mountain Cover. No matter where you are in life, God is lifting you up. He sees the best in you. He cares about you and your dreams. God is mindful of you. Your dreams are not dead. They are living and growing inside of you. Allow God to renew and restore your imagination and ability to dream and believe again. I pray that you will have childlike faith and always see the splendor and possibilities of life. Next week's episode is titled, Why I No Longer Fast or Detox. I know this is a hot topic, and as people see my transformation, they always want to know about my fitness, health, and wellness beliefs and practices. This journey has been an unbelievable, miraculous, difficult, and yet hopeful one for me. I will be sharing about what true fasting and detoxing means to me and how God has brought me tremendous freedom and healing in this area. I'll be sharing more words of life, Mythbusters, another story time, answering your questions, taking your prayer request, and we'll be taking another celebration break. Plus, we'll be giving away more gifts and prizes. Thanks for listening to Episode 4 of my new show, Spirit and Soul, with Sade Champagne, and I'll see you next Monday, January 30th, at 6 p.m. Pacific Time, right here on Grind Hard Radio. Oh